What are the best methods for taking payments online for orders? Uh, I've been selling online for about 15 years almost now, full time, and I've used a number of different uh, programs for taking money, uh, you know, PayPal, Google Checkout, uh, Amazon Payments, Bill Pay, uh, Bill Point, um, Dwala, uh, Skrill, which is also money bookers, a bunch of them, just a ton of them. Um, and even square.com and um, Venmo and just all these different methods of taking money. And there's also a lot of th what we call third party credit card processors. And I did a review of this stuff sort of before. I just wanted to kind of go over sort of a list of what ones I think are good and what to watch out for, all that kind of stuff. Um, Believe it or not, actually, whenever it comes to high dollar amount money payments, I always tell people to go with something that's mainly bank transfer oriented or maybe money orders or things of this nature, never credit cards, anything over $500. I don't like taking the payment if it's a cr with a credit card. Uh, I have people that pay me with bank transfers. It's actually easier than you think. I mean, you can even have them come to your a local branch of your the, the type of bank you have such as Chase or whatever actually I don't think you can do it with Chase anymore but you can do it still with Wells Fargo you could tell them your bank account number and they could just go to the local branch and just deposit the money in your in your account okay in Australia actually that was a way that they did a lot of payments was bank transfer for a long period of time I think up till about 2005 or so when eBay started forcing them all to use PayPal, but a lot of them would take bank transfers to pay each other. Okay, so it is common in some countries. Um, and I actually used to get payments from Australia and England. Usually they would send me money orders in their, in their currency or they would send me a PayPal payment and then PayPal would convert it. But uh, with normal payments, like, you know, anywhere from a dollar to $500, um, if you know what you're doing, PayPal can be good. A lot of people don't know what they're doing. Then you hear all these PayPal nightmare stories, but actually once you know how PayPal works, it's not really a nightmare. Um, it can be a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing, of course. Once you thoroughly know how to use PayPal, it's not bad. Because they actually stick to what they say. So if you understand how they operate, they don't really deviate very much from how they operate. And taking a direct PayPal payment is far better than taking a eBay PayPal payment because an eBay PayPal payment is basically bad as far as I'm concerned. I don't, I mean, it's okay, uh, but for the most, and it's okay if you're if you're proactive and you're working with eBay, especially if your customer's trying to rip you off in the case where they file a dispute and they're just trying to rip you off. If you're proactive and you're calling up eBay and stuff, then PayPal with eBay is okay. But if you're not proactive and you've got the wrong type of customers buying from you, it can be bad. Um, because it's, the protection is more on the buyer's side when it comes to PayPal payment through eBay. But with a PayPal payment outside of eBay, there's no, the buyer protection is less. And the seller protection is about the same, but which makes it actually far better for you. So you actually win a lot more disputes if you get the payment directly outside of eBay. If it's just a direct PayPal payment or a payment on your website or whatever. Um, <clears throat> now, what are the best ones? Uh, I think Skrill is pretty good. It's called Money Bookers as well. I think it's good because they're thorough. Uh, they do a lot of background checks. It, it, it's kind of, that's, that's the downside of it is it's kind of not super easy to sign up for. I mean, it's okay, but it takes a little bit. They want you to send all these documents and stuff. They do it up front so that they can check out the person and make sure they're not some scammer or some idiot trying to rip people off. So I like Skrill and Money Bookers. Um, it's been very good. I've had many payments come through there. Uh, I don't know how many. Um, I don't think I've had a thousand. On PayPal, I've had probably, I don't know, man, 60, 70, 80,000 transactions on there. A lot. Uh, I don't know, 60,000 plus transactions on PayPal. Um, uh, with 
so I would say, you know, what are some of the good ones? I would say PayPal is good if you understand how they work. I would say Skrill is good if you know how they work. Dwalla is good. Um, the only problem is, is that uh, they don't usually take credit cards, but actually I think they are starting to do that. I don't know how, how good their credit card side is, but uh, before that they were basically bank transfer type oriented where the bank, you would attach your bank account to it and then take, send a payment that way. So I like Dwalla. It worked well for that. Square.com is good for only, I would say only bank uh, oriented transactions. Uh, when it comes to credit cards, Square seems to be one of the worst ones. I Actually, I wouldn't say it's the worst. Uh, I'm sure there's worse, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I was reading a page where there's like a bunch of horror stories of, of people taking payments with Square.com's credit card processing. The problem with is with Square, um, they kind of remind me of Google Checkout, and that's probably why Google Checkout isn't around anymore. Now it's Google Wallet. Uh, Google Checkout, they were inconsistent. They didn't follow their own rules based on my experiences with them. Um, they're willing to refund somebody even without telling you in some cases on an odd occasion. Um, that happened to me once or twice. Um, it's you know, it's not something that you can understand and work with. If, if you can't understand how it works, you can't use it, as far as I'm concerned. PayPal, they're, they stick with their what they say, which is the good part. Even if you don't like what they say, they stick with it so you know what will happen. Google, they say the same, they have the same kind of write-up as PayPal, but they don't stick with it. <laughs> so they kind of suck in that respect. Um, I don't know if Google Wallet's the same thing. Google Checkout was decommissioned. Google Wallet's the one that's around now. I'm not sure how big Google Wallet is. Maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. Um, what else? Uh, see, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, what? Let's see. Dwalla's pretty good. Skrill's pretty good. Venmo, you can't use it for... You're not supposed to use it for business transactions, but I found Venmo to be really good when it comes to just you wanting to send somebody some money real quick, like you owe somebody some money. Or you need you know need beer money or money for a party. You want to send money to your mom or whatever. It's a really good service because it's free, and you know as you can imagine, sending a Western Union costs you money. So, and this is it's bank transfer. Bank transfer is kind of like Dwalla in that respect. Um, I haven't had really much issues with Venmo, and the and the team that runs Venmo are really cool. Uh, they're very responsive. Like if you send them an email, they actually respond. They're they're not anal like a lot of these processors are like some of these processors are really anal I'd say square.com is probably one of the more anal ones when it comes to credit cards um, I would say with square they're I mean uh, with Venmo they're not anal they seem to be cool people normal people uh, let's see I have tons of third-party ones that I reviewed I can go through some of those you know, the ones you would use with like authorized.net or something, where you take in pay credit card payments uh, directly. They're like considered third party on eBay. You know, kind of like, um, I mean, there's a bunch of them merchant account providers, flagship. Flagship merchant services is a big one. And I'm not going to give them a good word, but because <laughs> they don't deserve it, I don't think. I did a lot of research on these. I haven't used these that I'm going to talk about now. But um, I did a lot of research using something very uh, relevant, uh, a website called uh, badbusinessbureau.com. It's also called ripoffreport.com. And you can just go on there. And they're not like the BBB where you can pay the BBB and you might get a biased review because you pay them. You know, like if you have an F rating and you, and you pay the BBB, the Better Business Bureau, and you do a couple little things, you'll have an A rating. You know what I mean? That's what some claim. I'm not saying that's exactly what happens, but um, some say the BBB is biased in the respect of if you're paying them money. Now, with the badbusinessbureau.com or ripoffreport.com, the guy that actually owns it, he like actually keeps himself uh, in a secret location or whatever you want to call it so nobody knows where he's at. <laughs> Because there's a lot of people who want to get them, you know what I mean? Because he lets anything go up on his website and he doesn't take it down. So, like, 
any company that somebody can report anything about any company and they won't take it down so there's a lot of these reports about these credit card companies on badbusinessbureau.com or ripoffreport.com and based on my analysis i did a bunch of analysis the good ones were like merchant account providers uh, merchant focus evo platinum service group um now i did this review uh, and another one, Start Merchant Services, National Merchant Bank Card. Um, and then there's some that are questionable that might be good, like Big Sky Commerce, Dharma Merchant Services, Practice Pay Solutions, Millennium Bank Card Services, Direct Pay Merchant. Those I'm not totally sure about. But the ones I just mentioned basically didn't have a bunch of negative reviews. Let's just put it that way. Um, and like I said, the ones that I were questionable, it's because they haven't had probably been around and been that big so i can't really say you know but the the very the bad ones are like i payment um flagship merchant services and you know with the flagship merchant services they're like super huge so i don't know if part of that's because they're super huge or if they're just not good or both you know uh, another one is total merchant services uh bank card usa uh, Volusion Merchant Account Express, uh, Wells Fargo Merchant Services, <laughs> and actually I recommend Wells Fargo for bank accounts, uh, but not for their credit card services. I think Wells Fargo is spectacular for bank accounts, particularly with selling online. Um, I recommend them because you can easily close and open an account if you have any issues, like if you have some PayPal account that blows up or you know you have some nasty credit card processor you need to deal with and they're trying to rape you you can easily close your account and reopen it and they can't get any more payments you see what I mean so that's what I like about them uh, Chase is okay too I use Chase and Wells Fargo I'm sure there's other ones that are good but I think Wells Fargo is the best for online selling um, uh, what I use is I use Skrill. I use I used to use Dwalla, but not enough people want to use it. Um, I use PayPal. Um, let's see, what else do I use? I use Bank Transfer. Uh, sometimes I use Venmo, but you know, like I said, you can only you can't use it for a bunch of business. You can't use it for business. You know what I mean? You it's not like PayPal or something. Um, Let's see, what else do I use? I was going to maybe start using Google Wallet. I just never got around to it. I have an account with them, but I don't know. I've, I've kind of stayed away from it. Uh, let's see, what else do I use? I, I have people sometimes send me money orders, believe it or not. Yeah, still. Um, is that it? I mean, is that all I'm taking money in? I think so. I can't think of anything else right now. That's pretty much it. Um... Yeah. Yeah, never take a big payment with a credit card. Okay? It's just stupid. Period. Okay? I don't care who I don't care what anybody says to you. Unless you unless you're some huge ass uh merchant that's got shit tons of money coming in all the time and you don't mind, you know, a $1000 chargeback or something. Other than that, other than that type of person or company I would say it's not wise to take any credit card payments over five hundred dollars, because of some, because of how people are. And if you were going to take a credit card payment for a bigger amount, I would say probably PayPal, or maybe Skrill because they're more consistent and you and you can know what will happen. So you should you know be prepared and understand how how the chargebacks work. There's certain chargebacks you'll win on PayPal and certain ones you'll lose. Okay. Not as described, you'll lose. Non-receipt, you'll win as long as you got a tracking number showing it. Unauthorized, you'll win. Okay. And the dispute process, you know, PayPal disputes itself, uh, depends on if you took the payment through eBay or outside of eBay. Outside of eBay is obviously a lot better. Not as described, you'll likely win. Um, Non-receipt, you'll win. Um, unauthorized, you'll win. Uh, on eBay, goodness, I don't know. Uh, Non-receipt, you'll win on eBay. Not as described, you'll lose. 
uh, unless you can prove the guy's a scammer, which you can in some cases. And there's ways to do that as well. But at any rate, maybe I'm boring, you know. I'm just, I, I thought I thought it was kind of crazy some of these reports I read. I don't want to kind of, you know, shit talk any of these, but just go online and do searches and you can read some crazy ass stories. Uh, I can read maybe a couple. This, this one, I'm not going to say who it is, but <laughs> it's one of the bad ones I mentioned. <laughs> so, but they, a lot of these have to do with people taking big ass payments and they're, they're just clueless i mean part of it's the the i'd say ha i'd say 40 percent of it is the person running the business and i'd say 60 percent of it is the company processing the credit cards because they're not doing background checks on those who are buying here's an example biggest joke of a company someone ordered a 1600 hundred dollar in print material material Charged it on Am his Amex card and was approved. The sale over the phone. Got the products, no complaints. Three months later, charges everything back. I get hit for the 1600 I send all paperwork to this company. They wait two months for an answer. Then ask for paperwork three more times. Still, issue is not resolved. I'm starting a campaign against this company now. I can't believe how they can't don't protect my business from scumbags like the client I had. I called Amex about this supposed thief. Even Amex said the customer charges back every order. <laughs> so, and this is not PayPal. This is not Skrill. This is not any of these. PayPal checks these type of people, and Google does too. I know Google does because they'll they check out if the customer is good. If they're bad, they they cancel the order. PayPal checks them out. I'm pretty much all of them do. This one, I said was good in one respect, but is bad in the credit card respect. This is the company I'm talking about. They're really not good. Um, I guess I'll say this Square. Square.com. Don't don't use credit card. Don't take credit card payments with Square.com. I just there's lots of complaints. Let's just put it that way. I think because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Basically, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, but these people that are signing up for it, it's because it's so easy to use. <laughs> Everybody, goes, oh, this is so easy to use. I can use my smartphone. <laughs> Six thousand dollars. Thank you. Okay. Three thousand. Three months later. Oh fuck! I lost six thousand. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm not laughing that you lost six thousand dollars. I wouldn't laugh at you. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Why the why the hell would you take a six thousand dollar credit card payment? You're freaking retarded. No, don't take a six thousand dollar credit card payment, especially on a company you haven't researched and is new. Okay, dude. Yeah, a lot of these are basically sixty six thousand six hundred, eighteen hundred, six thousand, one thousand six hundred. Um, yeah. Like I said, nothing over five hundred with any company and especially it depends on what type of products you're selling if you're selling stuff that goes to young people not even on over 300 you put on a card dude uh, I mean take a payment for 300 on something that's sold to a young person are you stupid you know I mean if it's if it's something that older people would buy then you're probably more likely not to have any issues if it's over 500 but still that doesn't mean anything, you know what I mean? It still could happen. So, at any rate, I wanted to make a video on this and hopefully it helped you out a little bit in your search for the right payment processors.